All right, Tainted Soul, try number two. So cards cannot be a higher rarity than Tainted. Maximum weapon count one. And there are a couple things, including training weight, which have been removed. That actually makes sense. Also, you might hear kind of a uh, pounding noise. Don't worry, uh, that's just the bread demons coming to get me. Not exactly the best start I've ever seen, but whatever, I'll take it. Okay, so let's, um... Let's see, how many... How many things can I get? Because I don't really care for shops on this. And we want to maybe go for relics. I'm going to go for that. It doesn't seem like it's going to be particularly good, but we'll see what happens. Uh, let's see. <laughs> oh, these are all absolute garbage. Hey, Katana again. Uh, let's see. Yeah. How much later would the uh, horror stream be? Eh, about like seven Eastern. Uh, let's see. So my health regen is way better than it was the last time, but I think I'm going to focus kind of on attack speed for the time being. I don't think we're going to need much for raw damage. It's already really good. So really it's defense, HP regen, and then as much attack speed as I can just jam in. Yeah, three-ish hours. Uh, like two and a half? I don't know. Because... I'm going to want to eat, I'm going to want to rest, and I also have to download a number of the horror games because I bought them a couple days ago and then I've just been sitting on them since. And then at some point maybe we'll play Scorn, but that might actually just be like a Halloween thing. I don't know. I I really I really wish I could promise more consistency. Um, but as of late, I've been kind of a busy, busy person with a whole bunch of things. Not as bad nowadays. Uh, let's see, do we want to... I'm going to banish low pressure. We're not going to need that. Scorn was such a strange game. It was. I, I enjoyed what little I saw of it. Yeah, lots going on. Understandable. Well, yeah. I mean, this year this year was the first year that, like, Shell and I felt safe enough to travel. So we moved back to Massachusetts uh, temporarily. We were going to buy a house, but that didn't, that didn't quite pan out the way... It, I think anybody wanted it to, uh, in terms of housing prices. Well, no, I guess if you're trying to sell your house this year, it's a great time. Um, but then we wanted to go off and get married, uh, get married, elope, I guess is the better, better phrase for what we did. And then, um, let's see, I'm just going to keep pushing up healthy. Yeah. Not in Portland anymore. Nah. Um, didn't want to actually... Can you rarity reroll a katana? Oh, that's an interesting question. I'll have to try that again uh, for one of these. But yeah, I, I'm, I moved away from Portland because I knew I wasn't going to be able to buy a house there. The prices were going to just be too high. And uh, I don't know if you heard our complaints about living in the north uh, northwest, but one of the one of the big problems we ran into was that yards were minuscule. So you'd more or less be butt up to somebody else's house and their dogs. And so we were kind of losing our mind a little bit. Uh, being in this like really cramped environment all the time. And so we were hoping to move back to the northeast. Where there weren't fires, there was snow, and we could actually have like a big yard. Uh, congrats on getting married, had no idea. We uh, didn't really announce it. I think most of my extended family doesn't, doesn't know. Not that I'm particularly close to them, they're... Uh, Kind of evil. Some aren't. Some of them are. Um. Let's see. Knew someone came down to Georgia, got a house for half the price. Yeah. I just don't really want to live in Georgia, is kind of my thing. I really want winter. And like, good, snowy, lake effects winter. Where my house is just completely buried. Like, you can see it. I'm not going outside for a week. I don't need to. I want that. I want that bad. And so, like... Yeah, I've thought about places down south. I used to live in North Carolina briefly, but the summers were so humid and so hot. Like... I want to be able to go outside for at least a chunk of... Uh... I want to be able to go outside during the year 
and not be like, okay, so the we have the miserably cold months and the miserably hot months. Like, at least in Portland, it was, the summers were generally pretty nice, and then the, um, the winters were so nice. I go to Montana, snow will entomb you. <laughs> if I knew, if I had any family nearby, Just Canada, but worried somebody would take me seriously. The problem with Canada is, like, aren't the housing prices up in Canada even worse than the U.S. by like a a decent margin? There's also like Virginia. Yeah, I have a I have a couple of friends in Virginia now. It's an area. Honestly, I'd probably look at Pennsylvania before I'd look at Virginia, just because I really like Pittsburgh. I think it's a lovely city. Um. Part of the reason why we we went on vacation there was to see like, hey, do we like Pittsburgh? And the answer was, yeah, kind of actually. Uh, but no, we're probably gonna we're probably gonna stick to uh, kind of Western New York unless things change. Alberta has great housing prices, huh? Unfortunately, I don't know if, enough about Canada to immediately identify where Alberta is. It's the bread basket, says Shell, who has just come from somewhere else in the house to tell me that information. This is just kind of fun to watch. Just everything gets close to me and just deletes self. I should probably drink some water. I've been talking too much. Ah. Wow, oh, this is kind of convenient, actually. I don't have to do shit. Why move? Uh, but no. I mean, honestly, I'm probably a couple months away from actually finding a place. At this point, it's like we have the down, uh, down payment saved up again. It's just a matter of figuring out where and then waiting for a good place. It's just an inconvenience. As part of the reason why we didn't buy earlier was because... Uh, I uh, underestimated how much I have to pay in taxes, and I was like, oh, yep, nope, gonna have to put buying on the back burner for a while. I'm just gonna keep investing in cardio. It's not great. But attack speed is the only thing. Well, I mean, attack speed and defense, but from like a damage perspective, I do not need, need more damage. I am freaking strong as as I am to begin with anyway. So is this all you do, Wander? Uh, or do you have another job? Nope, this has been my only job for... Nine... No. Not nine years. I went, like, officially full-time at the be beginning of 2016. Prior to that, I did have a job, like, working at UBS, and then I was also doing, like, animation for a satellite Nickelodeon studio and some other stuff, but... No, this is my only job and has been my only job for quite a while. Streaming, not so much so. YouTube is very much the meat of my business. Hence why my stream schedule is sometimes a little unreliable, because I have to prioritize what I'm putting up on YouTube. I'm hoping to change YouTube a little bit so it's a little bit less, like, demanding of, like, you need to have 10 videos a day to, like, keep up. And it's like, holy shit, I can't do that anymore. Um... Was that the meme swole walk? Yeah. It was Dr. Livesey. It's so good. I did not know what it was named until the other day, and now I now I know. <laughs> Anywho, this is a hard industry to be successful in. Yeah. Uh it's you really gotta work at it. And you really gotta do things. And honestly, number one advice I'd always give is don't be a Twitch streamer first. It's like the hardest, hardest way to become a content creator. Because it's almost impossible to stand out. You you almost have to be special. And if you're average on Twitch, you're it's an uphill battle. And so you have to be weird or special or interesting in some way beyond what a normal person would be. Otherwise, the platform itself just kind of will never care that you exist. Because there's legions of people 
just out there. For that it's best to grow Twitch through external means like YouTube and TikTok. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how much of my Twitch viewership I owe to my YouTube channel, but I'm pretty sure it's like the vast majority. Um, which is kind of weird to think about because it's just like maybe I should just leverage it all on YouTube and not bother with Twitch. Yeah, waves from YouTube. I'm here because of YouTube. Yep, kind of figured. Yep. <laughs> and I'm sure a couple of people absolutely do actually find me through Twitch, but I think YouTube very much is the better advertisement for me and my content because uh, it sticks around, it lasts, it speaks for itself, and I don't have to feed it too much more. So, isn't Twitch more lucrative in general? No. Not even close. Um, like, I make 10 times as much on YouTube than I do on Twitch. You can make a decent amount of money from Twitch, but it has to be through external stuff. Sponsorships and brand deals and whatnot. And I'm pretty sure you can get much the same on, um, on YouTube. If not more. Also, also, thank you, Next Vinko, for the what is that? For the Prime sub. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's just the massive, massive streamers, like ten thousand dollars per stream kind of streamers. Yeah, and there's only a handful of those. And even then, um, do you guys remember the Twitch leaks from last year? Um, where everybody's like financial information got leaked from uh, from Twitch, like how much these streamers uh, got paid. Were you 50th place? No, 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 no. I was, I was 5,000 something, give or take. But I was more or less like 5,000th. So arguably I'm the 5,000th best paid streamer in the world, uh, which means there's only 4,000 people that are better paid than I am, and I make m less than minimum wage from this platform. Like it, uh, it's not much money. Let's see, Void Statue. I really should probably pay attention to what some of these are. What does this do? Food also attracts all soul gems. Oh, that's kind of neat, actually. I like that. Uh, let's see. Healthy? Healthy. If for a business, I'd really invest more into YouTube rather than uh, Twitch due to persistence rather than only when live. Yup. That's a big one. Because, yeah, if, I mean, I had to go away for... Jeez. I've probably been offline and AF, like, away from my house for almost two to three months this year. Like, being consistent with my streaming schedule has been nightmarish. Being consistent with YouTube has been a lot of work, but it's super doable and very easy. Let's see, Michelle must have a good job or you're very frugal. No, actually, just YouTube pays really well. Uh, like I was saying, like, I don't, I don't, I think actually at this point I make more than minimum wage on Twitch because I don't stream as much as I used to, but back when I was doing like five to ten hours a day every day, the diminishing returns were not worth it financially. And it kind of sucked because it's just like, you know, I don't want to slow down as much, but as I get older, I can't uh, stream and record as much as I used to. And so it's just kind of like, okay, let's just roll it back. And so, yeah, financially it's dropped off even further, but... At least I don't hate parts of my job anymore. I think YouTube is like 90% for me. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Uh, I make about 10 times as much on YouTube versus Twitch, which is like pretty striking. Ideal length of uh, stream on Twitch is like three to four hours or something. Yeah, I've heard something like that. I don't actually know what the real answers are there. Yeah, YouTube-wise, it's, uh, it's a decent income. I don't want to say, like, it's, you know, don't quit your... I will say do not quit your day job unless your day job really blows and your YouTube channel is big. Uh, but at that point, you're already going to know. But, you know, do not quit your day job to try and become a streamer or a YouTuber uh, without ample preparation. And then probably also a pre-existing, um, well, a pre-existing channel that you've already been tossing a bunch of free time into. The only people I know know that have succeeded all more or less just 
stuck with it until they got big enough that they could support themselves. There are a couple of exceptions, but most people did not become overnight successes, and the ones that did oftentimes did not last. Um, there's one guy I know who got really big with Fortnite, like absolutely massive uh, one-year success, and then his channel died. Because his audience only wanted Fortnite, but then they got older and didn't want Fortnite anymore, and he wasn't able to refresh, you know, get more viewers by covering more Fortnite because the audience wasn't there anymore. You know, it was no longer the big thing. And so he's transitioned actually over into being a, um, a content creator, like advisor, effectively teaching people how to, um, how to get their videos to do better and to grow their channel and stuff. I don't actually know how successful it is, but, uh, suffice to say that, like, a lot of people that go into Twitch streaming and YouTubing don't actually, um, well, can't stick with it. It doesn't actually work. Do I want to go for the mid-boss, or do I want to go for the horde? Eh, no, I'm gonna go for this one. Because one good relic is gonna put me over, whereas the horde survival is just gonna get me EXP, and maybe not even that much. Yeah, so the skeletons are still scary, but I think I have enough defense that I can kind of cut through the rest. And yeah, you really can tell the meta progression is carrying me pretty hard. What should really catch people's attention is how many million plus sub channels are getting maybe a quarter of a million views per month. Yeah, there's a there's a lot of big channels that like explode in popularity but can't hold it. It's difficult. Ah. Uh, Verge of Disability, back's totally destroyed. Your job could be a fallback. Uh, so it can be. I know of, of quite a number of disabled streamers that do actually make it work. The one thing I will say is that it is it is not a casual job, nor is it a job that you just uh, do lightly, necessarily. You can, but it's hard. Uh, it's hard to succeed in that. And, I mean, if you're just looking for something to do, that's something different. But if you're looking to, like make a living, you're probably better off going into IT. Because what was it? Um, I was looking at the su success rate for game developers, and I actually think being a successful game developer is probably slightly easier than being a successful streamer YouTuber. But a lot of it has to do with the fact, well, a lot of it depends on, like, how you're going about things. You know, if you're just making kind of whatever games, maybe not, but I guess that's the same truth with, like, YouTube content. But if you're just doing, like, the same thing that everybody else does, it's going to be a lot harder to grow. Whereas I, I remember seeing a controversy on uh, the Held Bird site um, where it was... A developer was, like, really mad about that Squirrel with a Gun game because... You know, it was just a shitty asset flip, and why do... You know, all you have to do is just put, uh, jam some assets together and then make a funny gif, and then people are going to be falling over you. Um, whereas, you know, somebody can spend, like, half a decade of their life, you know, working on this really inspired product, and, you know, nobody's ever even going to give it a, a second look. And, like, in reality, the answer was the Passion Project game that this person was was mad wasn't getting attention. Ultimately, wasn't actually a good game. But the entire point was that the person that's making Scroll with a Gun made something that is instantly recognizable and... Um, well, maybe not recognizable, but it catch, catches your attention. You know, if I, if I say, like... If I put two games in front of you, a... Uh, high fantasy turn-based JRPG that looks like it was on the SNES that may have had like 10, 20 years put into it. Uh, okay, maybe maybe at that point. But you know, maybe maybe both have been in development the same amount of time. But you know, a, a, a turn-based JRPG very much inspired by one of the Final Fantasies or Dragon Quest or something like that versus a kind of funny game where you're playing as a squirrel with a gun. You might actually like the RPG better, 
but the scroll with the gun is going to catch yeah it has a good hook and it's stupidly important and so even if you might like the rpg better the scroll with the gun is going to catch your attention and stick in your mind a thousand times better than that fairly standard jrpg i think it's a something that a lot of people don't recognize when it comes to YouTube and Twitch and content creation and game development. And so it's part of the reason why I'd actually say being a successful developer is vaguely about as hard as being a successful streamer. Um, but I think the numbers are skewed because the barrier for entry to becoming a, a streamer and a YouTuber is so much lower. You know, anybody can effectively grab a microphone, install OBS and do a couple of streams, but that does not a streamer make. Not necessarily. And that there is kind of a heavy dis disconnect there. Okay, grab some more cardio. So what do we got? We have lightning boots, which are great. I was hoping for a better relic than that, but it's good enough. More cardio. Do we want sharpening stone? No. Do we reroll the shop? There's Hermes' hood, but it wouldn't have d done me any good. Stone skin, reroll the shop again, grab forged iron because can't get anything else. Yeah, I think we're fine. Oh. Oh. One thing I've noticed with game devs in general is most of them haven't actually studied uh, design of what pulls in consumers. I feel like a lot of game developers, there's two, two major motivators, maybe. Uh, it's I can make that better and I want to make my magnum opus. And so often magnum opuses are games that actually already exist, but were made by somebody else. So, um, a lot of, honestly, those turn-based JRPGs, many of which were probably invented by some, uh, somebody in their kind of teenage years. And, like, it's the thing that they've been trying to write or make or create forever. And, you know, at some point, maybe midlife crisis, maybe just got laid off, maybe just decided to push for it regardless and just, you know, uh, whatever happens, happens. And so they go make that turn-based RPG. And they might sink 5, 10, 20 years into it. Probably not 20 years. A couple developers were. I think Kenshi is probably one of these. The thing is, if you put 20 years into a game, it almost does kind of wrap around and become successful in its own way. Because unless you're, like, restarting endlessly, like, unless you Duke Nukem forever, you still probably have the chance to make something absurd that cannot exist without sinking 20 years into it. But most people, for example, they'll kind of pig-headedly throw themselves into making this game because it needs to exist for them to be happy. But the problem is a lot of these games don't necessarily have a space on the market, either because something literally already exists. I can't tell you how many um, Metroidvanias I have. I have five Metroidvanias that have reached out to me in the past week that I'm probably going to cover, and, like, I love Metroidvanias probably more than the average person. Probably more than the average Metroidvania fan. But even then, there's kind of that inherent, like... I wish people would stop making games in that genre unless they had something truly special to bring, because ultimately it's kryptonite. Uh, so many people will, will just be like, eh, it's another Metroidvania, and then go play, like, more Hollow Knight, because Hollow Knight is just that good. And so, you know, you have these people that either want to make their magnum opus Metroidvania, or they want to make, uh, you know, a Metroidvania. They want to make Hollow Knight, but better, because, you know, now it's got RPG mechanics, or maybe it's got this or that. And, you know, it's not actually, like, an invalid take to be able to do that kind of thing, but you have to kind of know what you're doing, otherwise you're just going to get ultimately passed over in the face of the, uh... I mean, market trends and interests in general. And so I think, I mean, I don't know. The Metroidvania is the pizza crust. You need to choose the toppings to make it worthwhile. And even then, there's so many toppings that ultimately... Uh, you really have to come up with something wild and new. Uh, to really make your, your pizza stand out. Otherwise, you're just going to be yet another um, meat lover's pizza in the freezer. Obviously I'm being like hyper dismissive in a lot of cases here. There are 
quite a lot of like really good Metroidvanias, and I'm sure of the five that I got, almost all of them are actually like above average games. But it kind of sucks. Because I know that, like, had they made something else with a little bit more of an original concept behind it, they probably would have done, like, way better. Ghost Song actually, actually looks promising. So that's one of those games that's been in development for, like, six or seven years or something silly like that. Like, I covered Ghost Song back in, what, 2016, 2017? And even then, it had been in development for quite some time. So, like, Ghost Song looks promising because it's had the time to cook. Uh, a lot of these Metroidvanias have not. And so, having played the demo, I can say, it's good. It very much kind of reminds me of Metroid Dread. Though, not nearly as, like, action-oriented. More just kind of the mood presented. Ugh, I need some AoE here. I wonder if the Death Aura would have actually been the better choice. Katana does a shit ton of damage, but it's still a problem. Is Adult Swim involved anymore? I doubt it. Adult Swim pretty much exited the games industry quite a while ago. And I don't think they're coming back. Which is kind of a shame. I actually knew quite a number of the people that worked there prior to that, and I never really got a good answer as to why they kind of bailed. But it seems like Adult Swim kind of just disappeared in general. Yeah, Adult Swim still exists. Yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure Adult Swim just kind of, yeah, is an entirely different flavor of trouble right now. Yeah, that's what I figured. Probably just capitalism. Or is Adult Swim Cartoon Network? Shit, I never... I don't know, I never had cable, so like, even Cartoon Net, Cartoon Network's ex existence was always just kind of like a big question mark for me. It was the... It was the TV channel that, like, I wanted to watch content from, but I could only do so at hotels or friends' houses, and that pretty much meant never, because I moved too much to have, like, really close friends. I don't know, you might have to do this with the Death Aura. I mean, like, I am able to hurt him for like a thousand every time I get close, but the absolute legion of skeletons following me around is a little problematic. If I had some better relics, I think this would be going much more swimmingly. Another thousand. I think we'll get him. We're just gonna kill kill him very slowly. I think th thankfully Devolver seems to be doing okay. Whoever their scout is, or scouting team to find new games, are like absolute experts in the field. Raw, Raw Fury and Devolver both are two kind of studios that they might not always put out like the best games ever. But almost every game that they put out has, like, value and vision. Kind of going back to that idea of, uh, you know, originality and game development. Um, I was reading a, a blog post about why uh, Domekeeper uh, did so well and was selected by Raw Fury. And one of, the, one of the big points made was that Domekeeper was actually kind of like a, a game jam side project that the developers had made while working on some other more magnum opus game. And uh, what ended up happening was that uh, they made it as the game jam, and without them ever marketing it or even telling anybody about it, uh, it managed to get like two to three times as many players as like any other game jam uh, entry in that, uh, in that specific game jam or whatever. And they were like, oh, this is special enough that I think we need to actually put some time into it and uh, possibly finish it. And it was a really good idea. Okay, almost died. 
I think I took a whole shotgun blast in the face. Ouch. But strong word of mouth. Um, so, kind of strong word of mouth, but I think the other point is unique and interesting games have their own gravity. It's part of the reason why Vampire Survivors did well. Admittedly, it's a clone of a different game, but uh, because it was kind of the first game on the scene uh, within the genre, it was effectively the one to take the crown. Because um, Magic Survival, Survival was on uh, the mobile markets and ultimately that just behaves differently. And so word of mouth is a big part of it, but I think word of mouth only matters so much. You know, I can I can shout about how good Revita is over and over and over again, but inherently it's always going to be a little bit less exciting for people because it's it's too easy for them to conflate it with other games that they've tried before. Even stuff like uh, Rogue Genesia, you know, we already had somebody drop by today to be like, oh, it's just another Vampire Survivor's like. And... Okay, come back. Come back, I need to kill you. Please die. Yes, got him! That was really hard, actually. Or, yeah, Voidigo. That's another one. Uh, let's see, Soul Shop. I don't actually think I have much to buy. Wait, yes we do. Two levels at once for Tainted Soul Cards. Nice. Does Katana's attack range increase with AoE or projectile range? I think it's project projectile range. I don't think AoE helps it in the slightest, which is a bit unfortunate. What else do we have? Peasant. Additional rarity reroll. Health regen upgrade. Oh, it is AoE. I was wrong then. Uh, let's see. Soul coin gain upgrade. I should probably grab that. Gold and weapons drop chance. Now I'm going to do Snuffhead and we'll see what I can do. I might want to try the aura just to see if I can get it. But, so, as great as Voidigo is... <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. As great as Voidigo is, ultimately it's kind of based on Nuclear Throne and Gungeon and some other things. And so, inherently... The developers are always going to be um, slightly disadvantaged by the fact that people are going to make that comparison and might not be as willing to give it a chance. That's not, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that people won't, but it doesn't have that same gravity of weirdness. Okay, reroll zero for free. I could do Pike, but I think. I only get one weapon, yeah? I'm gonna double check this. If I only get one weapon, I don't know if I wanna roll Pike. Oh no! Most stats 25%, dash charges 1, EXP gain doubled, elite and boss health reduced, have a card, uh, carved dice, no soul shop bonus. Oh. So that means no meta progression. Cards cannot be of a higher rarity than Tainted. Maximum weapon count by one. Okay, yeah, there it is. So, I'm not even going to think about Path too hard here. Except for, like, the initial bit with the treasure chest. Because we can probably reorient. Um, so I'm just going to go to this one. What is this? Huh. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. Okay. How the hell am I going to beat this one? I might have to do this one off camera. What was that noise? Me dying a little. Don't worry about it. Uh, kunai, spear. No. Windblade, spear. No. I almost kind of wish you could just pick whatever weapon you want. You know, Wander use Splash. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I could almost see that weapon being decent, but... The only one reroll. Yup.
I'm going to give it a shot. Wait, are there no other enemies? Okay, there they are. Need fractal. There is no fractal. Okay, that second attack is actually going to work, though. Okay. Holy shit, I leveled a billion times there. Oh, uh, the only immediate problem with this is I'm going to lose out on so much EXP. That is that is uh, that's a problem. I'm going to I'm going to restart. I don't think Crossbow is going to do it. I can see it being good, but then I'm going to get crushed. I I need 100% of my EXP. Katana's good, maybe Death Aura. Maybe Death Aura. Maybe Fire Ring? Yeah, Fire Ring's too slow. Yeah. The Death Aura was okay, but it sucked against bosses. If yeah, Fire Ring with high attack procs quick. Doesn't matter, though. Um, I'm not going to be able to get high attack. Like, high attack procs. Like, I could maybe try Shuriken. I'm just thinking Death Ore is probably going to be the trick for me. It's going to be stupid slow against the bosses. I know that. But the attack rate on it is actually really good. So all I need to do is just focus on raw damage. Nothing more. Uh, let's see. It's still going to be painfully slow. Okay. Oh, right, and I have no meta progression, so my HP regen is abysmal. Okay, a few hours later. Look, I only have to beat this mission once. Oh, I don't even have the meta progression for... Uh, pick up radius. Oh, that's rough. I have no banishes or anything either. Oh boy. Well, it's okay. I'll just keep investing into forged iron. I was gonna say just straight banish and defensive stats and and go all damage. Um. Well, I can't banish anything, so that ain't gonna work. But yeah, I think I'm just gonna stack a little bit of a little bit of regen. But almost all almost all just entirely into uh just raw flat damage and damage multiplier. Yeah, you're thinking of the other tainted challenge. Don't blame ya. Okay, and I do have to pick up some pressure just just because. Not too much though, because I don't have much to do but pick up things. Okay. 
Yeah, we do it. We do an okay amount of damage to this guy. It's not much, but it's there. I was really hoping the uh, we'd be able to use our meta progression on this one, just so I could actually double the tainted drops. But I think that's specifically why you can't. Which means I should have actually done this one first. Plus, if we can get the uh, if we can get the relic where oof, he touched me briefly. Uh, if we can get the relic where I actually do double damage but have less health, that would change a lot. Okay. Forged iron. Perfect. Goblins go down reasonably fast. I think I will prioritize damage upgrades over help, um, over any kind of survivability. Yeah, attack speed does increase the tick rate of the aura. It does, but it already has pretty good tick rate. Uh, whereas his damage is abysmal. So what's the reward of this challenge? It makes it so all tainted mods are more powerful, I believe. Let's see, area? I mean, increase the AoE? Can't do it. I only have tainted cards, which is... I, I don't have a whole lot of options in that. We're shredding the we're shredding the bat fast enough. It's really the mushroom mid boss that's going to be the biggest worry. But yeah, because we have no crit options to begin with anyway, we don't need to worry about investing in that direction. Okay. Oops. Sure. Challenge would be a lot easier if you're able to get artifacts. Or are there just no artifacts in this challenge either? Oh, why? I mean, it's fine. I mean, luckily, the benefits for this are kind of minuscule. in retrospect because even with this I doubt I will be picking up tainted mods I could be wrong but I don't think I'm going to be doing it that often ah <sighs> do I grab defense I probably should but I don't know Did I actually finish my ring off? Yeah, it is at 7 out of 7. So, like, one or two more points on pickup radius it means I won't have to go chasing things. I'm not sure if that's worth it, though. I think it would actually just be better for me to invest into just raw damage still. Maybe, maybe I should actually go for for some attack speed. I don't know. I'll have to think on that one. Okay. Yeah, sure. Oops. I already cleared it. Uh, let's see. Get my damage multiplier up, or work on this a little bit. Sure. 
Sharpening stone, more forged iron. Probably should get cardio, but eh. Uh, honestly, I'm not actually sure what the di differences are going to be here. Because I don't know what's more practical. A combat level or... Uh, let's see. A combat level or opening up a chest for its rewards. Because it... I don't even know if I'm going to be able to buy relics in the, um, in the shop at the end. Boy, you can hear the, you can hear the aura procking just slightly. Dick, 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 dick. But yeah, we should actually probably go really hard on attack speed after all. Because if you noticed, uh, despite the fact that the aura has almost no knockback, it's attacking fast enough that... Even the mid-boss is kind of having trouble getting to me. Uh, let's see. Do I want to go for low pressure? Just because. No. I'll only pick it up if I have no better choice. Maybe. I don't know. I still think I should probably pick it up. Yeah, Skelemen are getting a little spooky for my tastes. Okay, let's let's just pick it up. A little bit more pickup radius means I lose out on less. Okay. I guess I'll head for the chest. A little bit more cardio, a little bit more cardio. Do I know the radius? It's It says it's got a range of 4.5. So, I think low pressure is fine. I might get one more. Oh yeah, there there's not even a shop here, so getting gold is meaningless. I'll get one more, this way we'd never have to worry about it. Okay. Yeah, it's it's glacial against the mid bosses, but it's safe because we don't we don't have to worry about getting overwhelmed or surrounded. With the exception of skeletons. If there are too many skeletons, I think it's going to be a problem. Ow. Yeah, I think we should go for the damage multiplier. I'm not sure how much that base damage affects the ring at this moment. If it's just a point one, or if the ring has its own kind of multiplier on the base damage. Beyond it, I guess we could check. Uh, can I check? Okay, cool. So, deals continuous damage. It's currently... currently does 8 damage. So if I pick this up, now it does 8.12. So next level up, I'm gonna see if I can get the other one. And see if that gives me just a point one damage bonus, or if it's actually more. Okay, so eight two five. Eight two five to eight six six. So we actually want as much flat damage as I can. Rather than forged iron. I think they're both still good, but That has, that has a bigger all, bigger overall payoff. And I'll go for the 
attack speed. Ow. Yeah, the skeletons are going to be a problem. They're going to get through. There's not much I can do about that. Hopefully not many of them are going to be able to get through. But they are. Yeah, so flat damage and attack speed bonuses. I think are my best too. Mushrooms getting in. Rude and spooky. This is one hell of a one hell of a run. Okay, cardio. Yeah, I don't know how fast the aura has to be to completely lock them down. Okay, and I think I think we want to go for the chest. Just no matter what. Okay, another sharpening stone, another sharpening stone. So what's what's my damage up to now? Ten point. Uh oh, I should have gone for the question mark. Uh that's fine. And the bats we shred pretty fast. It's really the question of the skeletons. You know, how effective are the skeletons at getting through my aura? Not very. Skeleton mid-boss might be another another thing entirely, though. Dang. I was kind of hoping I could just sit there for the rest of the run, but that ain't gonna happen. Oh, no. Skeleton mid-boss gets shredded. Perfect. He did touch me, though, which hurt. I think if I had been investing really hard into attack speed, I would have been able to lock these guys down just that little bit more. Shoot. But, oh well. Yeah, stinky mid-bosses forced me to move, which is dangerous just because the tick rate on my AoE he isn't quite fast enough to catch them at the uh, perimeter. Oh, do not touch me. Do not touch me. I am but a killable... small killable man. And you and your big pointy sword are terrifying. Yeah, it's probably for the best that I didn't invest too much into defense here. I think the aura largely handles all of it. Some health regen might not have been the bad, I the worst idea, but still. Say, so, hey, really loving that you had a speed draw to the beginning of your videos. Much love for an artist. Yeah, I, uh, I've been wanting to uh, figure out how to integrate my art back into my channel in some way. And so, yeah, the whole speed draw thing was kind of just like a random flash of inspiration. I, uh, I was doing a sponsored video, and I was just like, oh, the first minute of this, they, you know, wanted me to read all my talking points. I'm like, that's so boring. I wonder if I could just read, m or not read, you know, read over the talking points while doing, like, a speed draw at the beginning of the video just to keep people interested. And the answer was, uh, well, I couldn't do it for that video, but I've been doing it ever since. And it's like, yep, actually just works out, works really well. And now I get to actually... Put my art somewhere apart from just on my thumbnail. Y'all just walked in, did something, then went eh, eh. 
as kind of like a muffled cough sneeze. I'm not entirely sure. It was really cute. Oh, oh boy. I don't know if the skeleton got more HP or what, but they're a little hurty. I do not know how I'm going to kill the boss though, like this. That is that is actually a concern. No idea you did your own art. You're really good. Yeah, I went to uh went to college for art, but did not end up uh actually doing art professionally, so I've just been kind of trying to loop it back in somehow. Let me tell you it also Doing my own art saves me a ton of money compared to quite a number of other creators who, you know, commission their own stuff. I have no idea what their overhead looks like. Oh boy. Oh boy. But it cannot be cheap. Okay. 2% more attack speed. Ow. Okay, we got we got some sweet meat. I think the skeleton got tougher. Oh, I was not ready for that. Oh boy. Okay, we're good. It was the flash art, not professional. I mean, it was just it sucks. Let's see if you thought of doing little art vids on your YouTube channel. I, so I did a couple of times, but it never performed particularly well from like a metrics perspective. So it didn't really seem like it was worth it for me to do art art videos on their own. So I think doing the little speed draw at the beginning of every episode instead seems like the easiest and best way to do it, rather than trying to have like standalone content. Sort of. I do want to do some art games with Shell, Shell though. You know, drawing fake Pokemon and the like. You know, little stuff like that. Uh, let's see, what would your tips be for someone who wants to get into art, but doesn't have the patience and get super nitpicky about their own art? Start by drawing just with a pencil. Don't don't go further than that. Uh, the biggest issue that all artists have to deal with is the ugly stage, in my opinion. And the less time you spend in the ugly stage, the better. And so, uh, especially if you're just starting out, don't even bother dealing with stuff like that. Uh, Let's see. If you don't know what the ugly stage is, I guess the phrase, one of the phrases is, it's like the 80-20 rule. 80% 80 of your time is spent doing 20, like, doing 20% 20 of the piece, or the last 20% of the piece, or something to that extent. But effectively, if you're doing any kind of art piece, uh, there will be a certain kind of point while you're working on it where you really have to knuckle down and like work on rendering it and all sorts of stuff like that. And it takes forever and it's not very fun and it doesn't look very good the entire time you're doing it. And so it's kind of an unpleasant place to be. And so if you're, if you don't have the patience and you don't want to deal with it like not looking good enough, uh, the easiest way is to work fast and just keep drawing. And if something doesn't look good, abandon it, throw it away, and start again. Or draw something else entirely and just just absolutely let speed be your... Um, let, let speed be your teacher, I guess. Damn. Each of these keeps giving me... Um, Shell disagrees. Shell says sometimes rendering one area to near completion uh, helps you get better at that. I think that is also valid, but my point on that one is only, uh, like, especially early on, if you're just learning how to draw, trying to go, like, all in on finishing something ain't gonna make you better, it's just gonna make you frustrated. The other thing is, never compare yourself to other people, always compare yourself to yourself. Um, there are a thousand artists that will always be better than you. Uh, even if you're the absolute best, there's always going to be an artist better than you. 
even if that's only true in your head, it still remains true. Okay. Uh, let's see. Sharpening stone, a little bit of damage. We'll chip you down. Somehow. Okay. But I'm going to have to go find some turkey legs, otherwise I'm going to die. I've got them halfway down, at the very least. Uh, huh. Well, I'm not talking styles. I'm just talking like base skills. Like this is this is absolute beginner art tips rather than like somebody that's trying to develop a style. Uh, part of the reason why I suggest drawing is just to get used to the the act of taking something from your brain or from your eyes and then putting it on paper. And that's that's a skill that like you don't most people don't have naturally. That's that's not something that most people can just do out, right out the box. One or two people can. So, like, there are always going to be people with, with, like, immense talent. But as somebody that had no talent for art but a passion for it, most of my skill just came from repetition, just drawing all the time. You know, Got a slow minute. Instead of spending some time on Twitter or memeing on Discord or whatever, draw. Bored in class or in a lecture, uh, if you can get away with it, draw instead. You know, I actually knew I wasn't going to be terribly interested in, like, most AP classes in high school. So I said, well, what if I just took the easier classes and then drew the whole time? And so I still learned, because it's actually really easy for me to, me to at least to listen while I'm, um, while I'm drawing. Most of the time. If I get, like, really into something, that's not true. Nah, that ain't gonna work. The problem is, the skeletons behind me have started to stack up a little bit, and I'm having trouble carving, uh, I'm having trouble carving my way through them. Boss does not have much HP left, which is good. But the Skella Wall is becoming an insurmountable. I might be able to slow down and, like, kill more of them. But it's... that's hard to say. I... Probably should have put at least one or two more points into health regen. If I level at this point, I might just start dedicating my HP to that. Or my HP. But few levels I get into that instead. Okay, he's down in the 900s. 800s. Okay, cool. Every time we kind of just pass by each other. Not so bad. 700s. And the other thing I can do with this Skella Horde is try and find the areas that are rich in bats and bleed some bats off of it. 600s. This is a challenge of patience. Okay, 470. Okay, I cannot get greedy. I would love to. Don't get me wrong. But I cannot. Okay, let's bleed off some more bats from the crowd. And there he is. Okay, that was maybe a bit too greedy, but it's only two more hits. Okay, we don't want him teleporting because he could end up somewhere completely different that we don't want to be. I'm going to get un unusually good at fighting this this mid-boss. Or this, this boss, I guess. There he is. It would be neat in this necromancy ability. Radius around you where skeletons turn around and fight for you. Oh, that'd be neat. Either way, we got it. 
Ah, according to the dev, it gets super laggy. Well, that's unfortunate. Ooh. Tainted card power. Does that only go up an additional 50%? Oh my god, it gets expensive too. I don't know if that's worth it, all things considered. It might be? I don't know. So what other challenges do we have? Because we got Peasant, which gets us additional rarity reroll, which is good. Health regen upgrade, which might actually be really good. Most stats at 50%. Ouch. Uh, Soulless. No souls. Shop bonus, but more gain. Yeah, it's doable. Uh, shopkeeper's vacation, gold multiplier upgrade, and weapon card chance. What about the higher tier challenges? Um, high. Health regen, pick up distance, charge, heal on kill. Huh. Okay, critical damage upgrade. That's not bad. Multiple tainted card card levels at once. Yep, that'd be great. Uh, so that's... Yeah, that's tainted soul. So, I think we'll want to grind enough to actually get the, the rest of this one. Because the tainted card power. If I can have that and go into tainted soul, I bet I'll probably just rock it. So it is an E rank one, so that'd be a long run. Let's see. Hero hero card drop chance. Move speed upgrade. Soul, uh, soul coin gain. Weapons again. And then Tainted Soul again. And multiple card levels at once. Neat. Plebeian, Evolution Drop Chance, Elite Chance, and then it's kind of the usual. Crippled is funny. <laughs> oh yeah, that actually, that looks like my kind of run that I'm probably going to die on. But still. Okay. I said I was going to play other games today. That was a lie. This was a lot of fun. My voice is starting to go, so I'm going to take a little bit of a break. And then Shell and I will play some horror games.